Hello and welcome. In this video, we are going to go over some sample PMP exam questions from the Pinbox 6 edition. And before we get started, if you haven't done so already, please join our free course where we will teach you how you can obtain your PMP or your CAPM certification in the next six weeks. So sign up on this URL, which is www.examspm.com free. If you're serious about getting certified, this is a must go to. You have to go to this training because we're going to share so many great tips with you. All right. That being said, let's jump into question number one. Okay, question number one. Now, by the way, I'm going to read the question out to you and give you a couple, uh, couple of seconds or so to compute the answer. Please feel free to pause this video, um, figure out the answer, and then play the video again because I may not give you enough time to actually figure out the answer. So feel free to pause these videos, do the, do the answers, and then um, play the video again to find out the correct answer. Okay, let's get started. You are working a, on a project in Skydine International Limited as a project manager. In the closure stage of the project, you are interacting with your team to create the lessons learned documentation, which will include recommendations to improve performance for future projects. Which of the following will you not include in the lessons learned documentation? A only positive aspects of your project which can be used by others in the company, B, justifications for corrective actions chosen, C, causes of variance, and D, reasons for cost variance if the project is over budget. Okay, and if you said A, you are correct. You don't only include the positive aspects in the lessons learned documentation. You want to include the good, the bad, the ugly. You want to include everything so that future project managers can learn from your mistakes and it could be helpful for others. And another thing I want to point out here is that in this question, you could have just gotten the answer just by reading the last sentence here. You didn't really need the, the beginning blurb. So sometimes you'll see questions like this. So what I would always recommend is read the last sentence first and then go back and read the entire question for context because sometimes you would actually be able to compute the answer for the question just by reading the last sentence. Now let's move on to question number two. The company you are working for has assigned you as the project manager for a new project where the sponsor left midway due to health issues. As the project manager, you are responsible for meeting the project schedule deadlines. If there is some delays in the project schedule, you should A. Increase the timeline for the project B. Fast track or crash the project and let management know the impact of this action C. Ask the resources to work overtime to meet the project deadline or D. To change the project scope And if you said the correct answer is B, then you are correct. So you can use schedule compression techniques to shorten the project schedule without changing the project scope. So project compression techniques include crashing and fast tracking. Now let's move on to question number three. Assuming that the critical path of your project has a duration of 10 days, which of the following cannot affect the project timelines? It's A, if the project has one critical path and you are able to decrease the duration of the critical path by one day by using a new tool. B, if the project has one critical path and you have to increase the duration of the critical path by one day due to the delays. C, if the project has two critical paths and you're able to decrease the duration of one critical path by one day by using a new tool. Or D, if the project has two critical paths and you have to increase the duration of one critical path by one day due to the delays. And if you set C, 
then you are correct. This question is a little bit of a tongue twister. So when you have the critical path, whenever you change the length of the critical path, the entire duration of the project will change. And the question is asking you for in which of these four scenarios by changing the duration of the critical path, you're actually not affecting, the keyword is not affecting the project uh, timelines. So if you only have one critical path, it doesn't matter if you're increasing or decreasing the duration, you will be changing the project timelines. So that narrows it down to just C and D. Now in D, you're increasing the length of one of the critical paths. So if you increase the length of one of the two critical paths, you're going to increase the entire project duration. And in C, you have two critical paths. So both of these paths is 10 days long. If you reduce the, the length of one of these paths this, uh, by using a new tool, you're not decreasing the entire project timeline. If you decrease one of the duration of one of the critical paths, it just means that now you're just left with one critical path instead of two on this project, but the project timelines will not be impacted. Let's now move on to question number four. If the project manager creates a contingency reserve to manage risk on his projects, this can be referred to as A, avoidance, B, passive acceptance, C, mitigation, or D, active acceptance. And if you said D, then you are correct. Now, the, the key here is that the question says that the PM is not doing anything to actively manage the risk. He's just putting aside a contingency or reserve to deal with the risk if it does happen. So this is the most common active acceptance strategy to establish a contingency reserve, including the amount of time, money, resources to handle the risk when it happens. And this is called um, the active acceptance. Question number five, you are the project manager in a car manufacturing company, machine parts required in your manufacturing process supplied by a vendor did not reach in time because of bad weather. You had anticipated this risk and planned for it in your risk response plan. So as per your risk response plan, you start, you, you start using unutilized machine parts supplied six months ago. However, this has been subjected to your project to a new risk because the machine parts which were not used six months ago suffer a higher level of defects. The new risk can also be called a, unidentifiable risk, B, unmanageable risk, C, residual risk, or D, secondary risk. If you set D, secondary risk, it, you are correct. Secondary risk are risks that arise as a direct result of implementing a risk response. Now let's do some math. Question number six. In your project, you have reasons to believe that the current variance occurred because of extraneous factors, and you do not expect similar variances to occur in the future. What should your estimate at completion EAC for your project be, given that the BAC equals 500,000, AC equals 150,000, EV equals 180,000, and CPI equals 1.5? Is it A, 270,000, B, 320,000, C, 480,000, or D, 470,000? If you said D, you are correct. So the formula to compute EAC is AC plus BAC minus EV, which equals to 150,000 plus 500,000 minus 180,000, which equals to 470,000. Now, important to note, there's actually five formulas to compute the EAC. And the way that you determine which formula to use is really just what variables or what input values you're given in the equation. In this case, because we're given uh, BAC, AC, and EV, we know that we, we're going to plug it into this formula. 
Question number seven. Which of the following statements related to validate scope and control quality processes is accurate? Is A, validate scope is concerned with the correctness of the work results, while the control quality process is primarily concerned with the acceptance of the work results. Or B, validate scope is concerned with the acceptance of the work results, while the control quality process is primarily concerned with the correctness of the work results. C, validate scope is done only after changes are approved by the change control board. Or D, both validate scope and control quality processes are done uh, sequentially. If you said B, you are correct. The validate scope process is primarily concerned with the acceptance of the deliverables, while the control quality process is primarily concerned with the correctness of the deliverables and meeting the quality requirement specified for the deliverable. Question number eight. In a project life cycle, the least number of conflicts occur over A, priorities, B, cost, C, personalities, or D, schedules. If you said B, you are correct. Project conflicts occur in the below sequence. Schedule is number one, then priorities, manpower, technical, procedures, personality, and then cost. Question number nine, another math question. As a project manager, you have selected project A that has an initial budget of $1,200, out of which $1,000 has already been spent. To complete this project, you need an additional $400. Project B will require $1,400 only for completion. Which project would you prefer to manage and what will be the ETC? A, Project A, ETC of $400. B, Project A, ETC of $1,800. C, Project A, ETC of $1,600. Or D, Project B, ETC of $1,400. If you said A, you are correct. Since $1,000 has already been spent, this is a sunk cost. So we will ignore it when we're calculating the ETC or the estimate to complete for project A. ETC is how much more money do you need in order to complete this uh, project. For project A, it's $400 more, whereas for project B, it's $1,400. So it's more beneficial to select project A because the ETC is just $400 more. Question number 10, your project team has decided not to change the project management plan to deal with a specific risk. This is an example of A, contingent response, B, accept, C, fallback plan, or D, avoid. If you said B, you are correct. Risk acceptance is a risk response strategy whereby the project team decides to acknowledge the risk and not take any actions unless the risk occurs. Question number 11, your team had initial concerns that team members would not be able to work well in a virtual team structure. However, when you are midway into the project, team members have successfully figured out efficient ways to work together effectively. The team is in which stage of team development? Is it A, forming, B, performing, C, smoothing, or D, norming? If you said B, you are correct. Performing teams are able to function as an organized and interdependent unit as they find ways to get the job done smoothly and effectively. And this is based on Tuckman's uh, ladder. Number 12, which of the following items is not included in the schedule data? Is it A, order and delivery schedules, B, cost baseline, C, cash flow projections, or D, all of the above.
if he said B, you are correct. Scheduled data could include such items as resource histograms, cash flow projections, and orders and delivery schedules. Question number 13, which of the following is not a purpose of management by objectives? A, aligning project goals with the organizational goals, B, aligning the project goals with the goals of other subunits of the organization, C, aligning the project goals with the goals of previous projects, or D, aligning project goals with individual goals. If you said C, you are correct. Management by objective is a system approach for aligning project goals with organizational goals, project goals with other subunit goals of the organization, and project goals with individual goals. It's not uh, to align the project goals with goals of previous projects. So C is the correct answer. Question number 14, in the social, economic, or environmental context of the project, which of the following statements about enterprise environmental factors is not true? Is it A, may either promote or hold back the project management processes, B, may restrict the project management processes, C, may promote the project management processes, or D, neither promote nor hold back the project management processes? If you said D, you are correct. The EEF or enterprise environmental factors may enhance or constrain project management options and may have a positive or a negative influence on the project. Question number 15, which type of contract represents the highest risk to the seller? Is it A, cost reimbursable plus incentive, B, fixed price plus incentive, C, fixed price or D, cost reimbursable. If you said C, you are correct. Sellers under fixed price contracts are legally obligated to complete such contract with possible financial damages if they don't. So they have to complete the work even if that means that they uh, will be unprofitable. Question number 16, which statement best sums up the communication processes on a project? Is, is it A, communication can best be summed up by defining who needs what information, when they need it by, and then defining the best person to deliver the message? B, communication can best be summed up by defining who needs what information, when they need it by, and then defining the best resource to deliver the message? C, communication can best be summed up by defining who needs what information, when they need it by, and then defining the best format to deliver the message. Or D, communication can best be summed up by defining who needs what information, when they need it by, and then defining the best modality to deliver the message. If you said D, you are correct. Project communication can be summed up as who needs what information, when do they need it by, and what's the best modality to deliver the message. I know in the answers here, it's all very similar. The only difference is in A, it's the best person, B is the best resources, C is the best format, and D is the best modality. Sometimes you'll see the four answers to be very similar, and in this case, you want to choose the best answer to answer the question, even though all four could technically be correct. Now let's move on to question number 17. Which of the following is a tool or technique that should be used when creating the project charter? Is it A, project uh, product analysis, B, project selection methods, C, project management methodologies, or D, expert judgment? If you said D, you are correct. Expert judgment is a tool and technique in the develop project charter process. Question number 18, user acceptance testing and the resulting notification is part of which process? Is it A, control scope, B, validate scope, C, collect requirements, or D, manage quality?
If you said B, you are correct. The validate scope process is the process of formalizing acceptance of the completed project deliverables. The key benefit of this process is that it brings objectivity to the acceptance process. Question 19, which of the following is an output of the control cost process? Is it A, cost forecast, B, basis of estimate, C, cost change control system, or D, work performance data? If you said A, you are correct. Cost forecast is one of the outputs obtained from this process. Question number 20, which of the below factors does not have any impact on the design of the project organization? Is it A, schedule limitations, B, environmental forces, C, strategic choices, or D, technological factors? If you said A, you are correct. Schedule limitations will not influence its organizational design. Question number 21. While developing the scope management plan, it is important to consider one of the following environmental factors. Identify which one. Is it A, organization culture, marketplace conditions, and company infrastructure? B, scope management plan template? C, lessons learned and historical information? Or D, organizational policies and procedures? If you said A, you are correct. The enterprise environmental factors that can influence the plan scope management process include, but are not limited to, the organization's culture, infrastructure, personnel administration, and marketplace conditions. Question number 22. Tom and Jenna work together on a project. Tom is assigned as a project manager and Jenna is assigned as a project coordinator that supports his efforts. Unfortunately, Tom had a health emergency and had to take an extended leave of absence. During this time, Jenna has been asked to work as the project manager for the project, which will likely be done before Tom comes back. Which type of power does Jenna now have? Is it A, personal power, B, expert power, C, situational power, or D, reward power? If you said C, you are correct. Now Jane has situational power because the situational factors led her to stepping into the role of the project manager that she is now serving. Question number 23, which of the following is a hybrid type of contractual agreement? Is it A, fixed price contract, B, time and material contract, C, cost reimbursable contract, or D, fixed price with redetermination? If you said B, you are correct. The time and material contract is a hybrid type of contractual management that contains both cost reimbursable and fixed price contracts. And another thing I want to point out in this question is sometimes you'll get terms that is not covered in the pinball guide and you automatically know that that is not correct. So D, uh, fixed price was redetermination. It's actually not a term. So sometimes you may see some funky terms and that Automat if you know all of the terminology in the pin box and it's not in there, you kind of automatically know that that's probably not the correct answer to the question. Question number 24. What are the configuration management activities that you will include in the perform integrated change control process? Is it A, configuration accounting and verification and audit? B, configuration identification status accounting and configuration and accounting. C, configuration identification status accounting and verification and audit. Or D, configuration verification, configuration identification and risk forecast.
If you set C, you are correct. Some of the configuration management activities that you want to include in the perform integrated change control processes are configuration identification, status accounting, and verification and audit. Question number 25, your organization runs on a weak matrix or a project management structure. Which of the below stakeholders has the full authority over the project funding in a weak matrix? Is it A, the project manager has the full authority over project funding in a weak matrix? B, the functional manager has full authority over project funding in a weak matrix? C, the PMO or project management office has a full authority over the project funding in a weak matrix? Or D, the project sponsor has full authority over the project funding in a weak matrix? If you said B, you are correct. The functional manager has the power over the project funding, not the project manager. In a weak matrix, the functional manager is likely to be the project sponsor. Question number 26, which of the following processes should be considered in project planning? Is it A, define scope, develop schedule, plan risk management, plan communication management, or B, plan quality management, plan procurement management, plan risk responses, control cost, C, manage quality, develop project team, manage communication, plan risk management, or D, validate scope, control quality, control schedule, control cost. If you said A, you are correct. All of the processes within A are under the planning process group. A tip here, before uh, you start to go into the 200 questions on your exam or 150 you're doing the CAPM certification, one tip here is to draw out the process chart. So you have your uh, 10 knowledge areas across the rows, the five process groups across the columns, and the 49 processes intersecting in the middle. That could really help you as you're going through some of these questions. You can always refer back to the chart. It will count towards your exam time. So just take the first five minutes or so to kind of gather your thoughts and draw this cheat sheet for yourself could really help because when you walk into the exam, you have two blank pieces of legal sheet paper that's given for you to write any notes that you need to on it. And this could be a great first thing to kind of collect your thoughts, calm your nerve, and draw this sheet for you before your exam starts. Okay, now let's go on to question number 27. Which of the following is not a valid example of enterprise environmental factors? Is it A, organizational culture and processes, B, stakeholder risk tolerance, C, employee performance review records, or D, historical lessons learned knowledge base. If you said D, you are correct. All of the above are part of enterprise environmental factors except for the historical lessons learned knowledge basis, which is part of your organizational process assets, not your enterprise environmental factors. Question number 28, Jonathan have been assigned to manage a project for a subsidiary unit of your organization in a foreign country. In this context, which of the following will aid him in managing the project better? Is it A, awareness of the culture and customs in the country? B, information about the country's demographic and social structures. C, awareness of the political history of the country. Or D, information about previous projects done in the country by your competitors. If you said A, you are correct. PMI emphasizes multiculturalism as an important aspect of modern day project management. Question number 29, which of the following techniques would be the most helpful when defining activities for your project? Is it A, rolling wave planning, B, templates, C, extreme programming, or D, just in time?
If you said A, you are correct. Rolling wave planning is a form of progressive elaboration where work to be accomplished in the near term is planned in detail and future work is planned at a higher level uh, of the work breakdown structure. And our last question for today, question number 30. As a project manager, John is in the process of creating, collecting, distributing, storing, retrieving, and ultimately disposing of project information in accordance to the communications management plan. Which of the following tools should he use? Is it A, stakeholder analysis, B, expert judgment, C, communication methods, or D, communication requirement analysis? If you said C, you are correct. Communication method is one of the tools and techniques used in this process. All right, congratulations. Today you just finished your uh, 30 questions that's going to help you prepare for your upcoming PMP or CAPAM certification. And just as another friendly reminder, be sure to sign up for this free training where we'll share all sorts of really great tips and tricks that's going to help you pass your PMP or CAPAM certification on your first try in the next six weeks. So be sure to sign up for this training and I will see you there. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you learned a lot. And if you like this video, be sure to give us thumbs up and comment uh, below to let us know. Thanks so much and I will see you in this free training.